If they're not willing to do it, then I think President Trump has been very clear they're not going to get relief from the crushing economic sanctions that have been imposed on them. Uh, and we'll look at ramping those sanctions up, in fact. John Bolton warning that North Korea could face more sanctions as a North Korean mi missile launch site is reportedly being built back up again. To former presidential envoy to Iraq, Ambassador Paul Bremer on this situation. Ambassador, good to see you. Uh, North Korea is clearly feeling its oats. And I'm just wondering if, if China is behind it all. They, it's hard to think of, of North Korea doing something that could jeopardize everything that the president and Kim have been working towards for the past year and a half without China being at least notified, don't you think? Well, I'm not so sure about that. I think, I think it's possible the Chinese are rather uneasy with this uh, the second failure of a summit between uh, the, the two countries. What the Chinese have to worry about is if, uh, if it becomes clear to some of uh, our allies in the region, I'm thinking here particularly of Japan, and also, although not technically an ally, Taiwan. If some of those countries were to decide that our nuclear uh, umbrella was no longer uh, credible over the Korean Peninsula, uh, they may be tempted to get their own nuclear weapons. There's a real uh, risk, I think, and I think the cancellation of these exercises in South Korea was a, a serious mistake on our part for just that reason. Well, we still have the ability, though, to, to apply maximum pressure, do we not, to, uh, to change a North Korean's attitude? Well, yes, but that doesn't seem to have worked. Uh, I mean, there's a place in diplomacy for flattery, and, and we've certainly used that with the North Koreans, but in the end, a statesman is judged by results. And we've had two summits which were not very well prepared on our side, where we have not made any progress towards getting a program in place to achieve the agreed goal of denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. So uh, I, I think it's, a, it's an unsettling situation at the moment. Well, that's why I think the Chinese are somehow involved. First of all, if, if they're cutting the ties, if, if Kim is cutting the ties with, with Trump, uh, which have been developed very carefully over the past year and a half. It hasn't been all uh, just spontaneous. Uh, and he's going against the wishes of China in terms of rebuilding his missile sites. Who does he have? He's on his own, and that's a dangerous place to be if you're, if you're in the position he is on the Chinese continent. Well, well, I agree with you. That's why I, I think the Chinese are probably quite... They can make the same analysis you just made, and it's not a very comfortable one for the Chinese either, if you think about it. So what do the Chinese do? If they're unhappy with the situation of Kim, their maximum pressure could be a lot more effective against Kim than ours. That's absolutely right. Uh, the Chinese uh, basically looked the other way for the first year or year and a half, uh, letting goods go across their border with North Korea, apparently un, really unconstrained. So there is an opportunity here, and it's interesting that the, the American-Chinese trade discussions are at a rather important point right now, too. There is a possibility for a serious, quiet discussion with the Chinese about our mutual concerns about what's happening in North Korea. Well, and again, uh, the idea of killing two birds with one stone, I mean, that's, that's what this has been about for a long time, whether you can use uh, the negotiations, the trade negotiations, to either subtly or directly if, affect what's happening with North Korea. Do you think that's being done now? I honestly don't know. I, I have always thought the important thing to do in our relations with China was to embed uh, the talks about trade and other things in a broader strategic discussion with the Chinese about whether we can find a way, the two of us, two of our countries, uh, to have a security situation we're both at least moderately comfortable with in yeah. Asia. And that's the question. It has to be embedded in a broader strategic framework, these, these trade talks. Ambassador, very quickly, I want to bring it back to our hemisphere in Venezuela. Uh, as you know, they have 2 million percent inflation now, which is just unimaginable in Venezuela. I can't see the Maduro regime. As I've said before, there's never been a government in my entire life that has survived hyperinflation like they're having there. So I don't think Maduro is going to last. But there's a question of what to do after Maduro, if Maduro goes. And one of the keys for Venezuela is the oil industry. That's, that's their, right. their natural wealth. Uh, in Iraq, you had a similar situation when you were the ambassador there. And, and the decision was not made to privatize the Iraqi oil 
even though people like Milton Friedman said use the Alaskan model, divide it up into a piece for every Iraqi citizen, that would give them ownership over it. Should the same be done in Venezuela, particularly considering your own background in Iraq? Well, I, I think these countries that are effectively monocultural countries, where the, there's only really one major source of resource, which was also the case in Iraq, uh, it has to be done in a way that's politically sustainable. We did not take that step while I was in Iraq because it was our view that the Iraqi people, yeah. through their elected government, should make that decision. So you'd have to have a situation after Maduro where the Venezuelan people agreed that the best thing to do now is something like the Alaska model. We gave the Iraqis a, a white paper on this subject when we left there saying this that. is a good model. Yeah, and it was, and a lot of people thought that that would have solved a lot of problems, particularly I understand they're planning to do that in Venezuela, but we'll have to wait and see what Guaido does if he gets in power. Ambassador, great to see you again. It's been a long time. Thank you very nice much. Nice to see you, David.